Suddenly, all I can feel is a sudden pain in my back. Oh no! Ha! Ah, ah, ha! Deer! Deer is inside of me! There's a deer inside of me! Oh no! How's it going everyone? My name is Lionel and welcome to Fruition. This is a game where you go into the woods and yandere shenanigans happen. There seems to be a theme in my channel, but uh, y'all know what this is all about. So hey, let's get right into it, shall we? All that I can hear is birdsong and the wind brushing lightly against the tree branches overhead. The light is bright through the canopy. This morning, I had turned off my phone and left it on my desk before throwing water and food in my bag, locking my front door behind me. The only thing on my mind is taking one step after another. I checked the map before I left home, of course. I'm not about to waste my only day off this week getting lost in the middle of nowhere. As much as nature is my retreat from the real world, it would take on a completely different air if that happened. I just need a refresher. Not a dramatic few days wandering in circles until some poor ranger finds me. I think I'd be more distressed about the makeup work when I get let back home than anything else. But at least I'd have my job to thank for saving my butt. If it was up to my roommate, he might never notice, but I could say the same to him, though. If he died at his computer, I probably would not have noticed until the smell. I shake my head free of those morbid thoughts. Today is not about real life, but it's about nature. It's about refreshing myself to go back in real life. I picked a route through the woods that had no paths for two reasons, for the challenge and to be alone. All I have to do is head straight towards the large lake near the campgrounds, and then in the evening, I'll walk the dirt road back into town. If I can't hitch a ride back from someone, simple. When I last checked my watch, perhaps I'm all back, it was almost 5 o'clock. Thanks to the length of summer days, I have no worries about making it back before nightfall. That said, I need a break. I lean back against a tree and take a swig from my water bottle. It has been a while since I last checked my map, so I dig into my pocket and pull it out. Before I can unfold it completely, the wind picks up. The paper slips from my fingers. My fist closed with a snap in an attempt to catch it, but all I feel is air. I grit my teeth. Damn it! What should I do? Uh, chase after it, stay on the route, chase after it, stay on the route. This seems like a trap. Uh, I guess I'll cheese after it. I might die from this. I won't let it get away. Take a few quick steps, pawing at it as soon as it's within reach, only to miss it by a hair's breadth. It blows up higher into the air. I jump. I miss. I run off to the map until it swoops behind a trunk and goes out of sight for the first time. As I step over a root in my path, making sure not to stumble, that my brain finally catches up to the fact that I've gone far too far from my intended path. That's when my eyes spot something I did not expect this far into the woods. There's an old weathered brick sticking out of the dirt ahead of me. I stare at it for a moment. Walking forward, I peek around the trunk, obscuring it. The same trunk my map disappeared behind. Ahead, in a straight path, are more and more of the same bricks. As the path continued, they form into a fully complete cobblestone path. At the end of the path, right before a curve that goes behind a large boulder, is my map. It is nestled perfectly on the bricks as if it was being held by some unknown force. I notice there is no longer any birdsong. I consider abandoning the map and somehow making my way back to where I was. But the question is if I know exactly what route I followed. Should I head back or forward? Ah. Uh, walk down a cobblestone map path. Like, what could go wrong? I step forward, hesitantly at first. I quickly pick up speed. My intention is mainly to grab the map while it's down, but I can't lie to myself. I'd also like to see where this path leads. I shouldn't stay too long, but it would be a shame to leave without stating my curiosity. The patchwork stones are gorgeous after all. But who built this and why? At the end of the trail, I lean over to grab my map. It slides out underneath my fingers as if another mysterious gust of wind blows on it. Except I did not feel even a slight breeze. It follows the continuation of the path, curving gracefully between the boulders. The cobblestone path continues for a while while expanding into the plaza. At the other end, some 50 or so feet away is a large stone wall made with bricks and carvings. Whoa. The inside of boulders are intricately carved, albeit rounded out by what must have been years upon years of weathering. Some creatures painstakingly carving out this masterpiece, a circular rock. Despite the weathering on all the surroundings, that looks to be untouched. I stand and gawk at the sight. Who knows how long it has been since another person has set foot in this space. 
I walk into the plaza. The sunshine warms my skin. The silence makes it feel like I somehow transported far from the woods, despite it still surrounding the area. I turn to take in the place in a slow spin, but immediately catch myself when I see something large moving in the woods. By the time I center my eyes on whatever the dark shape was, it's gone. I pause. Was it just my imagination, or should I be worried about wild animals? Without taking my eyes off the tree line, I slowly retreat out of the plaza. My back presses into something. I freeze. There was nothing behind me a second ago. Whatever it is, it's warm and breathing. Two hands rest on my shoulders, and I feel them lean in. A huff of air brushes against my ear. Before they can speak, I shrug out of the hole and spin around to gain a better bearing on the situation. They are tall, but what really grabs my attention is their head. With hair, a beautiful gradient of green and twin branches growing from their temples with leaves and mushrooms. Their bangs cover most of their face. The stare of their lone eye is enough to make me close my mouth in a snap. I gulp. Who are you? They take a step towards me. I take a step back. They continue their pace. I twist my feet to thoughtlessly flee into the woods. Do not turn from me. Are you not mine? I pause. Uh, am I his? What do you mean? No, I'm certainly not. What do you mean? Because if you were meaning what I think you're meaning, I might enjoy this a lot more than I should. What do you mean? They tilt their head. Mine. That doesn't explain what that means. I shake my head when they don't answer. I didn't mean to trespass if that's a problem. I'll be on my way. Wait. Goodbye. I turn towards the entrance. They grab my arm. They grip tight enough to make me yelp. I said, wait. I still. Their teeth are sharp and long. Unnatural. You will do well to listen to me. I am the god of these woods. Oh, great. It's not a deal with a god complex. It's kind of hot. It has been a long time since a visitor has set foot on my grounds, but it has now happened. Their hands feel tough and ridged like bark. The agreement has finally reached fruition because you came. They smile. It's you, isn't it? Ah, uh, what do you mean by it's me? I guess I did come here, but leave. I'm not who you are looking for. Uh, I guess I did come here, but... I'm not here because someone told me to be. I shrug, unsure of how to react. I don't want to make them mad. I was just looking for my map. Your map? They turn their head. Miraculously, my map flies in on a gust of wind and hovers before them. They gently grab it out of the air with their free hand. My mouth drops open. How? These are my woods. I shut my mouth, thinking over their words. All right, giving them the benefit of the doubt, if they can control things. You let me here? They smile. They crush the map in their grasp and toss it behind them. How astute. You were so close, but just out of reach. I needed to light the way. There would be no sense in letting you pass by unaware. I guess I was wrong before. Although I did understand the meaning at the time, someone did beckon me this way. Now... You. They begin to tug me deeper towards the carving in the plaza. I struggle to pull my arm free, but they don't seem to notice. They apply pressure on my shoulders, sitting me on the outcropping underneath the carving. I notice how sharp their fingernails are as they pull them away, giving me space. Also, not much. They sit beside me. I insist on getting to know my offering. My offering?! Am I offering myself up to you? I haven't been able to talk to someone in a very, very long time. It seems as if no matter how much I physically struggle, I won't get out of here unscathed. Perhaps it's best to use my mind to work my way out of whatever this is. I should, uh... Let's see. Answer questions or ask questions. I will answer these questions around here. All right, these are his words. I will answer these questions. What is your name? It's Yun. Yun. What a darling name. How old are you? 27. What is your trade? I open my mouth to answer, but they continue before I can speak. Are you a basket weaver? You have the hands for it. 
Uh, no. An instructor, then. The gleam in your eyes looks like it could be quite severe. Students quaking under your strict command. Oh, are you the sort to take commands? Uh, whatever your name is. I'm a receptionist at a gym. Also, I am taking a class in teaching wilderness skills. Ah, not only a nature lover, but one adept enough to treat it with respect. I think it's important to coexist with the environment. They stare at me for what feels like a millennium before tilting their head. And of your family? I don't live near them, if that's what you're asking. Does that make you lonely? I take a second to think over that unexpected question. It is at that moment, with their small wide, that I see saliva drip out at the corner of their mouth and down their chin. I stare. Uh... What is it? I will ignore the saliva. I mean, heck, I mean, he's just drooling over me. There ain't anything wrong with that. Right, Blahas? Yes, plural. I have two Blahas now! Yay! It may be stupid to keep ignorant, but if I can keep their attention focused on anything else, I might be able to think of something to get out of this. I force a smile on my face. I'll enthrall this god with details as long as they allow and then hightail it out of here at my first chance. No, I'm not lonely. I visit them sometimes, but I keep myself busy. They lean in a little closer. I turn away nonchalantly, trying to manufacture more space. And your upbringing. It was good. My parents are nice. I had a decent friend group at school too. In fact, when I look back, they are nearly in my face. I flinch, cracking my head into the stone mural behind me. Stars fill my vision for a moment. Before I can move, their hand slams into the stone beside my face, effectively trapping me. I swallow heavily, watching the saliva that was now pouring out of their mouth. Their bangs part ever so slightly. The other eye peeks out beneath the strand's mossy hair. The intensity of rings of color in their iris makes my stomach drop. You are quite interesting. Do you not find me threatening? Their gaze lowers from my face to look at my throat. They bite their lip, sharp teeth nearly impaling the skin there. They meet my eyes again. How about now? Their face begins to elongate before my eyes, and horns tear out their forehead. I squeeze my eyes shut, the sight of it making my stomach churn. Even then, I can still hear the changes. I want to cover my ears, but I can't move. It feels like eons before the final crack of something occurs. The god begins to lean closer. I have to do something before they kill me. Wait! They pause. I can feel their breath on my face. Their shadow, blotting out the sunlight from behind my eyelids, is much bigger than before. Let's talk a little more. They lean back. I hesitate to open my eyes, fearful the moment I do. They will fly forward and tear into my neck with a single strong snap of their jaw, leaving me to choke on blood if they are not a merciful god. But I am hoping they are. I need them to be. So I ride on my hope, take a deep breath, and open my eyes. Oh, that's hot! Oh, that's hot! <laughs> Oh god, the face staring back at me is much different than the one that had originally. It's horrifying. If I continue to show that fear though, who knows if their mercy will wane. So I attempt to rewire my brain. No, it's not horrifying. It's beautifully emblematic of the woods they say they rule over. And no, they're not going to eat me. I force a small fake smile on my face in an attempt to not to grimace. Let me tell you more about the world now. You said you haven't been able to leave the woods, right? I can prepare you for what you've missed. Despite their animalistic features, they seem to be smiling now. Go on. I'll talk about it. Uh, wait, I'll talk about the white world, my slice of the world. I guess I'll talk about my slice of the world. I mean, heck, the god seems very, very intrigued about me, so why not? It's best to speak about what I know. They had more than enough questions, so they clearly were interested in my life, even if it was just by proxy. I can feel in those details. I haven't lived here my entire life, but I think half of my life is good enough. I currently live with a roommate, and while we can't call each other friends, he's probably a better example of a modern day person. Not that I don't do modern things, but he's more technologically involved than me. And what does that mean? He spends a lot of time with uh, a device called a computer. It has games and stories on it. You can talk to people from all over the world. And do you not like using it? It's not that I don't, but I prefer being outside more. Having to deal with being constantly contacted is a bother too. Like today, 
I put aside my technology and came to the woods to have a moment free from it all. Free from it all. To come to me. Her eyes lowered, tracing a line over what I can assume is my throat. Uh, yeah. Sure. It wasn't planned at all in the end, but if that appeases them, good. At least I hope that's what it's doing. I straighten, trying to change the subject to the town itself, but I don't get the chance. With no provocation, they lean in closer, making my eyes zero in on them again. We are nose to nose. Do you like your life out there? The voice is quiet, intense. A difficult question that has a definite answer. Um, do I like my life out there? I guess, yeah, there's a lot to love. Sure. I ponder for a moment. Yeah, I do. It can be difficult at times, but it's still worth it at the end. There is delicious food to eat, beautiful places to visit, and friends. Good friends. Even if I only live in this part of the world, it's enough to have my loved ones close. They lean back, giving us both breathing room. They tilt their head, seemingly lost in thought. I open my mouth to say something, but they cut me off. I see. That sounds lovely. I have missed that wonderful world you speak of. They suddenly grab my cheeks with both their hands, pushing my face together. I shudder. Here's what will happen. I will not take you as my sacrifice, but I will take you on as my dearest follower. I want it to be you who is beside me. Their eyes narrow and their smile widens. You're interesting, and a good stepping stool into this new world, unassuming and all. They drop their hole on my face to grab my hands before I can react. Suddenly, I feel my skin burning beneath their fingers. I try to rip my hands from their grasp, but they won't let me, digging their claws in for extra measure. I bite my lip from the pain until it bleeds. They bash their head against mine, rattling that my brain. It takes me a second to horrifyingly realize they are kissing me. <laughs> oh god! Oh no! Oh guys, I swear I'm not a furry! I'm not a- Oh no! <sighs> They drop my singed palms and one hand grips my jaw painfully, contorting my face to make it easier for them to kiss. I grunt. Oh no, am I into this? Their unusual lips grind against my self-inflicted wound, tearing it further. When they pull away, all I can do is grasp for several long moments, trying to suck in all the oxygen I was depraved of. Oh god, that tongue. Yes. Here is the deal. They poke the burn they caused on my hand. I hiss. You will go out and bring me a new sacrifice. Once I consume them, my deal with the witch will be broken and I will be able to leave. We will be able to go anywhere my heart desires. Their hand grips my chin again and I flinch away ineffectively, almost choking on air in an attempt to prepare for another forceful kiss. I throw my hands in between us as a terribly shoddy shield, as if it could prolong the inevitable. It never comes. Their disgusting eyes simply peer down at me. Do you understand? It doesn't matter if you don't follow my instructions. They give me a more forceful poke to one of my palms. I had helpfully put out for them, digging their fingernails into the black burn mark that blinded both sides. These will burn you alive. I don't want that to happen, you know? You don't want that either. You'll miss out on your wonderful world. Our wonderful world. So you'll come back home soon, right? Please stare at me for a beat. Before I can blink, the long tongue presses against my bloody lips and swipes up across my cheek to my ear. Ah, uh, <laughs> we'll break my chains together. Oh, I'll break anything for you, daddy. I mean, uh, uh I never got your name. We smile, let it go of my chin and back away. Now, go find someone for me. I have no qualms over who. Their eyes rove over my forum. It will be a treat to see who you think is worthy. Please search my face for a second longer. I would hurry before you run out of time and options. You wouldn't want to have to bring me your loved ones, would you? I look down at the burns on my hands. The shapes are like tattoos, written in some language I can't comprehend. I stand shakily and nod. They don't stop me as I decisively speed walk towards the exit. I can feel their eyes on the back of my head as they follow me all the way to the boulders. I'll be waiting. I clench my fists and don't look back. At first, things are normal. As normal as they could be with etchings on my skin. I run back to my house and lock myself in my bedroom, intent on sleeping off the whole affair and hoping I would wake up without the marks. I am awoken far before my alarm by a burning sensation, as if I am standing far too close to bonfire. 
The burning doesn't abate for days. I call into work and ignore the emails from my professor. It just grows in intensity. If I run my fingers along the runes, I can feel the indent as it eats away at my flesh, like an itch. I know what I have to do to stop it. I pound my fist on my roommate's bedroom door. He's usually at home, holed up in his own world online, so we don't cross paths too often. I need him now. Hey, Cody! Whoa, you okay, dude? Yeah, it's Halloween makeup. I was just uh, wondering. I bite my lip. I know you're not really into outdoors or anything, but would you like to take a hike into the woods with me tomorrow? Just a day trip. Cody stares, a mixture of concern and confusion. Are you sure you'd be up for it? Yeah. He flinches at my sudden exclamation, so I modulate my tone. Yeah, actually, I think it would make me feel a lot better. Okay, uh, I'll see if I can clear my schedule. The relief makes me feel sick. You're sure you're all right? I will be. I give him a smile, but cut it short to speed walk back into my bedroom. Without looking back, I close my door behind me, staring straight into the bathroom. Shaking, I retch quietly into the toilet. Come on, Yen. You can do this. You have to. Oh, no! <laughs> my roommate is a sacrifice! Oh, God! Okay, what if I told him that I don't like the outside world? Why not? Okay, no. It's a complicated question, but no. There are a lot of problems in my daily life, not to mention on a global scale. It's tough, but that doesn't mean I want to die. They inch closer, and without any way to move my head further back, I have the sudden realization that they might kiss me. My mouth shuts tight in a panic, near grimacing in an attempt to keep my mouth flat. They shift before our lips can touch, instead moving their mouth closer to my ear. Good. Then I shall keep you. I stiffen. What? Uh, you can. I can do whatever I wish. You are my sacrifice. And it doesn't make sense to me if you don't like it out there. Why stay? Because, uh, I've learned a lot about you. You matter more to me than to a world that doesn't conform to your whims. So we shall see if we can change the rules of the deal. Be my sacrifice. Release me. Sagiate me. I can give you your desires here. You'll need nothing else. This way, the bargain will be kept. You are my offering. As per the witch's agreement, my appetite is sated, in a way. I can leave, else we will just have to spend time together here until someone else stumbles upon us. Perhaps one of your loved ones will notice you're gone and come visit us. No, I want nothing to do with this. You refuse? Refusal is not an option for you. They tilt their head, they put both their palms on my face, and again, I worry about them kissing me. Wouldn't you like to pretend to do this willingly? I open my mouth to respond to the question, but a sudden pain erupts on the skin under their hands. It's as if I'm being burned. It begins to crawl under my chin. I cry despite myself. The tears sizzle as they hit the burnt skin just under my eyes. I feel them press their forehead against mine as the pain continues to travel down my neck to my torso and limbs. Through my tears, I can finally see what is happening. Dark lines like ink runs down etching some ancient language into my skin. I collapse into the horrid god and they catch me. It's very lonely out here, and I have to say, talking to you has been easier than any of my old worshippers, especially that witch who made a wicked promise she never kept. But you, you're mine now. The most delicious sacrifice indeed. And if you think about escaping, my dear, these marks will dissuade you. They move their grip to hold my neck, and press their unnatural lips against my cheek. The pressure makes the burning pain increase, and I try to pull away. In response, their grip around my throat tightens, choking me. They stop struggling. They don't let up. Instead, they continue, peppering kisses up my cheekbones. They pause. A sharp bite to my earlobes jolts me as stars begin to fill my vision. I claw their hands around my throat. I hope you understand. They drop their hands from my throat. Just as I gasp for air, they press their lips against my own. Thankfully, it was only for a brief second. Now rest. I will be back in the morning. They back away from me. I watch them leave through the entrance, laughing to themselves. I count to ten and struggle to stand. My entire body is screaming at me to not move. But I have to. I need to get out of here. They are out of sight by the time I reach the boulder, sprinting at a speed enough to knock my hat off. I will not come back for it. 
Suddenly, my foot erupts in red-hot pain, and I fall back, unable to think or see. By the time it abates, the only thing I can do is pant and stare at the woods ahead of me. I stick my hand over the exit, only for it to begin to burn heavily as well. I pull back as if I touch a hot stove and look at the smoke rising from the runes etched onto my skin. My body feels heavy as I raise my gaze to look at what I thought was my escape route. I can't leave. Oh, dear lord, no. <laughs> hey, I'll talk about the wide world instead. You said you were the god of these woods, not of the woods of the world as a whole, right? They narrow their eyes, but don't say anything. They force my lips back into a smile. Then let me tell you about the whole world. There was much for them to learn about, therefore much for me to distract them with. Not all of it is good news, but I'll start with the good things. No, I would like to hear what is bad. I take a breath, thinking about how to phrase my thoughts properly. I'm sure nature god wouldn't like to hear about pollution, but neither do most humans. People who volunteer time to clean up parks and everything. What is pollution? It can come in many forms, but basically it happens when harmful things are introduced to the environment. It makes the land, water, and air unsafe. And people voluntarily cleaning up is bad? Uh, no, sorry. I just prefer good, so it's easy to get distracted. I glance away and am rewarded with a sharp tap on my cheek from one of their claws. I quickly return my gaze through their own. But it's not a bad quality, but do not get too distracted. The bad? With humanity expanding and gaining more technology, harm happens to the environment on purpose, and some people are okay with that because they think humans are the most important thing on this planet, and convenience is first. But not you. No, of course not. Every creature, plant, ecosystem of the planet is important. It's why I like experiencing the wilderness. You know, while I can. The statement doesn't land well based on the god's stiffening form I flounder. But I'm optimistic. I told you I prefer the good things in the world. People are cleaning up the environment every day and fighting for it, until we fix the whole issue. There are rescues and forestry projects all over the world. I'm also optimistic. Once I leave this trap, your people will only have to rely on me. Oh, what? The claw that previously poked me returned as they traced a line from a cheekbone to my jaw. I tried not to move an inch. Wouldn't that be nice? With no provocation, they lean in closer. Making my eyes zero in on them again. Are you gonna kiss me again? We are nose to nose. Do you like your life out there? The voice is quiet, intense. A difficult question that has a definite answer. Oh, okay. So I know that no would basically just lead me to being his sacrifice. So what if I just told him yes? I ponder for a moment. Yeah, I do. It can be difficult at times, but it's worth it at the end. There are delicious food to eat, beautiful places to visit, and friends, good friends. For every bad thing humanity does, I'm still reminded of the good people all over. They fight for what's right and help each other. They lean back, giving us both breathing room. They tilt their head, seemingly lost in thought. I open my mouth to say something, but they cut me off. I see. That sounds lovely. I've missed that wonderful world you speak of. They suddenly grab my cheeks with both their hands, squishing my face together. I shudder. Here's what will happen. I will not take you as my sacrifice, but... I will take you on as my dearest follower. After all, I only have good plans for the world. I will revitalize the greenery and clear the smog. How, I wonder, through magic or violence? If violence, towards whom would it be aimed? I will see more how the world has changed. I'm not sure how long I've been disconnected, but I can't bear it to be so any longer. You will be there by my side. They drop their hold of my face and grab my hands before I can react. Suddenly, I feel my skin burning underneath their fingers. I try to rip my hands from the grasp, but they don't let me, digging the claws in for extra measure. I bite my lips from the pain until it bleeds. They bash their head against mine, rattling my brain. It takes me a second to horrifyingly realize they are kissing me. They drop my singed palms, and one hand grips my jaw painfully, contorting my face to make it easier for them to kiss. I grunt. Their unusual lips grind against my self-inflicted wound, tearing it further. When they pull away, all I can do is gasp for several long moments, trying to suck in all the oxygen I was deprived of. Here's the deal. They poke the burn they caused on my hand. I hiss. You will go out and bring me a new sacrifice. Once I consume them, my deal with the witch will be broken and I will be able to leave. We will be able to go anywhere my heart desires. The hand grips my chin again and I flinch away ineffectively, almost choking on air in an attempt to prepare for not a forceful kiss. Am I gonna sacrifice my friend again? No. 
It was the same ending. God damn it. All right, let's go on back. Okay, this time I'm gonna point out the fact that he's drooling over me. It was disconcerting. Are you drooling? I am voracious. Four? I don't want to venture a guess. I don't have to. Is it not clear? I consume my sacrifices. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I'm gonna run. I am gonna run. I'm running. I'm running. Like, screw this. Screw this. A chill rips through me and I stand without thought. I have to go. Go. Unfortunately, they stand as well. Go where, I must wonder. They smile and their teeth shine exceptionally bright in the shade. You don't have to do this. My pleading doesn't help my case. You bite the bottom lip. I want to. You're mine for this exact purpose. I could see why she waited so long to deliver. You'll make this fun. Something in their face was changing. I don't wait for them to finish speaking before turning around and bolting towards the entrance. Something leaps over me. I duck instinctively. Skidding on the floor, I scramble on my feet and head in the other direction. I'll have to jump a wall, but if I make a break for the trees, I can duck and hide somewhere. Suddenly, all I can feel is a sudden pain in my back. Oh no! Ha! Ah, ah, ha! Deer! Deer is inside of me! There's a deer inside of me! Oh no! The pressure radiates through me, tearing me apart. My entire chest erupts, spraying red. I choke on my blood, coughing. The long spires that rip through me are pulled out just as quickly. Despite my ears feeling as if they are stuffed with cotton, I hear a dark chuckle amidst the sound of my blood spilling onto the bricks below us. I collapse onto the ground. Darkness begins to fill my vision. All I can see is a strange deer-like creature with vivid eyes and antlers, slowly growing leaves. It smiles down at me, teeth sharp and shining with drool, and horns dripping with blood. My gaze falls to the ground. I'm tired and cold. Oh no! Okay, so does that include me? Are you still going to nom nom me? Will you still nom me? That includes me. My voice warbles in fear, but I can't help it. I lean back. Despite having the focus this entire time, it feels as if it has intensified tenfold. They tilt their head. I am starving. Before I can move, their hands slam onto the stone behind my face, effectively trapping me. I swallow heavily, watching the saliva that was now pouring out of their mouth. The bangs part ever so slightly and their other eye poke out between the strands of mossy hair. The intensity of rings of color in their iris makes my stomach drop. Your face certainly is delectable. The gaze lowers from my face to look at my throat. They bite their lip, sharp teeth nearly impaling the skin there. They meet my eyes again. I wonder how much you can take before you break. Uh, not much. I, I suck at pain. I am, I do not take pain very well. Thank you. The face begins to elongate before my eyes and horns grow out their forehead. Oh god, no. Okay, so that just leads me to the same route. So I'm going to be asking the questions here. Like, I don't know these are your words, but I will be asking the questions here, my dear boyo. How about we talk about you first? Me. Just who are you? You said you were a god of this forest, but I've never heard of you in my whole life. I've been locked away for far too long. I reigned over this place for countless moons. I was well within my prime when the temple was crafted brick by brick. And look at what's left of it. I look up at the carvings. The people who lived here respected me. They gave me their worship, their offerings. I gave them protection and a fertile land full of life. I gave and I took. It was a cycle of nature itself. The cycle of myself. But then I was tempted. The mouth twisted into a grimace that showed their teeth all the more clearly by that witch. She had said that she would deliver me the most delicious of offerings, but I had to stay here until it was given to me. A promise which was actually a twisted curse. The clawed fingers tap against the stone between us rhythmically, making a dull noise. Where has she gone? Her bones must be nothing but dust if no one knows of my existence. But their fist curls closed. Now it is time. You, my dear sacrifice, are here. It may have been a devious trick, but I still won. It is at that moment with their small white, I see saliva drip out the corner of their mouth and down their chin. I stare. Uh, okay. Maybe not, boyo. Maybe not. Okay, what if I just leave? What if instead of going through this hoo-ha, I just leave and not deal with this? Okay, there is not a chance in hell. I'm staying here. 
I attempt to jerk my hand away, but the grip stays strong. Look, I'm leaving. I jerk my hand again, and this time, they let go freely, almost making me fall onto my back. I stabilize myself. No, you're not. Something is wrong with that face. I blink rapidly to clear my eyes. Nothing changes back to normal like I want. The god's face begins to elongate and shift. So does the rest of their body. I've been waiting far too long to let you slip through my fingers. The horror of the sight in front of me kicks me into flight mode. I turn on my tail and run back to the entrance. I make it four steps before I hear something pounding against the ground. And then silence. Suddenly, all I can feel is a sudden pain in my back. And he's inside me again! No! Okay, what if I told him I'm not his? What if I just don't deal with this? No, I certainly am not. They pause, a frown marring their face. Who else would you be? Someone on a hike. I didn't mean to trespass if that's the problem. I'll be on my way. Wait. Goodbye. I turn towards the entrance. They grab my arm, their grip tight enough to make me yelp. I said wait! I still. Their teeth are sharp and long. Unnatural. You will do well to listen to me. I am the god of these woods. Oh, great. that has been a long time since a visitor has set foot on my grounds. But as now happened, the hand feels tough and ridged like a bark. The agreement has finally reached fruition. Oh, no, no, no. I ain't gonna deal with this, sir. Okay, you know what? The map is just not worth it. It's not worth it. I don't need to deal with this. There's something clearly wrong here. Even if I'm just being superstitious, I'm not gonna play my luck and fall into a trap. I look at the path and my map for a moment longer before twisting away. Eh, I should be fine if I walk back. There has to be some memorable parts of the woods. Not like there's anything better than the sights to get distracted by out here. I begin my walk slowly, trying not to go further than my original route. I'm not going to pretend I remember every rock I passed, but I'm sure there's some marker I'll recognize. As the 10 minute mark creeps up on me, I decided I messed up. There's only one thing to do now. Head towards the setting sun, as the lake is to the west, and hope to any powers listening that I don't go off course enough to miss the lake entirely. I take deep breaths as if it will help settle my nerves and take off. My pace is steady, but faster than before. I've wasted precious time. I was hoping not to be in the woods till after dark, but it isn't the end of the world. With no desire to take a break, I gobble down a crumpled granola bar and sip from my water bottle regularly as I walk. I reach the beach with nary a light but the moon. Its reflection on the water was payment enough for the detour. Looking back into the woods, I take a moment to wonder what would have happened if I walked down that cobbled stone path? I shake my head and walk away. It's as soon as I enter the stretch of grass that used to be an unofficial parking lot that suddenly lights flick on. They illuminate my surroundings and blind me. I hear a muffled scream. Shielding my eyes from the brunt of the light, I get out of the light and blink until the spots in my sight begin to disappear. A man leans his head out of the pickup truck. Behind him, I notice two kids stuffed in the back seats. Oops, sorry about that. Didn't see you there. It's okay. Dad, let's go. Hurry. He hesitates before leaning back to his look at his kids. When he turns back to me, he throws a hand up. Have a good night. You too. I was going to ask for a ride, but that's all right. I am a stranger, and that was a child's voice I heard in the truck. I don't want to pose if they're in a hurry. But the pickup truck rolls out of the parking lot, and I am left with nothing but moonlight. I pull out and flick on my pocket flashlight. If I'm going to be walking along the road, I'd rather have better visibility. My long trek home is ridiculously boring. Being unable to take in the sights of nature due to it being dark is so not fun. But the sounds of cicadas at least fills the night with a pleasant buzz. It's about 10 minutes into my stroll when a new noise fills the air. It sounds like paper. My map suddenly floats out from the tree line, landing right where my phone's flashlight was pointed. I stop halfway through a step and slowly turn my head to look into the woods, afraid of what I was going to see. I shine my flashlight around, as if I could catch whoever just threw the map this way. There was no way it could have possibly happened upon me here. So either someone is following me, or something is following me. I'm not about to take the bait. I look at the map, take a deep breath, and I begin sprinting, jutting around the piece of paper as if if I touched it, it would curse me. I don't stop running until I start to see buildings. Fast food restaurants advertising lights are better than nothing. It takes me another hour before I reach the safety of my home. I decide to never mess around in those woods again while I'm alone. Especially not after dark. I don't know what that was, but I know it was something. And I'm not sure if I ever want to find out what.
Well, that was the end of fruition. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to game will be in the description below. I know technically we didn't go through all the endings, but essentially like they have four different endings and they just like split it off between like two different variations of it. So hey, if you guys want to check those out for yourself, hey, go ahead. Anyway, I hope you all have a lovely rest of the day and I'll be seeing you in the next video. This is Lionel signing off. Ciao.